Hi, I'm Jackson, and welcome to Concordia On Air. And tonight... In news, Oklahoma passes an almost total abortion ban. And in sport, hockey. And on arts and entertainment, fashion review, part two. All that and more on Concordia On Air. Welcome to Concordia on Air. My name is Parker. And I'm still Jackson. Are you? I don't know. We're having a lot of existential crises today. I think we have them every week. Yeah, I think every we do week. too. Today was COS. Did you present for COS at all? I did not. Well, I, I, I did some organizing of nuts uh, and bolts. Did you? Okay, yes, what's but, nuts and bolts? What do you mean by that? Uh, ju I just went to the, the old scene shop by the theater okay. and organized the yeah. nuts and bolts, literally. Okay. Learned the nuts and bolts. Thank you for your service. Yes. Uh, I hear you got something. What'd you get? Um, how do you know about that? You're not my doctor. I have uh, the ability to read minds. Oh, do you really? Yep. You're heard, thinking of blue right now. Well, now I am, actually, yeah. I did get an award from the communications department. Turns out that if you keep on doing this, they just give you free stuff. So thank you, communication department. I love you very much. Um, it wasn't that easy, but I don't know. We figured it out. Okay, Le I don't want to talk about myself anymore. And usually I love talking about myself. You saw Morbius. I did see Morbius, starring Jared Joseph Leto. Well, can we can we bleep that name in the back, please? Um, so, so is it about a vampire? Uh, one could say it's about a vampire. Yes. And what are your what are your thoughts and impressions about the movie? Um, it could have been better if it was a thirty seconds to Mars music video the mm -hmm. entire time. Okay. Uh, but Matt Smith and Jared Leto. They, Matt Smith is in yes. it. Yes, I love Doctor Who. Matt Poole. Smith does a cool like little dance. He, he does a he dance. He does some push ups. Can you like do does... it for us? Actually, I'll give you some space. So. I don't remember the song. That's okay. But he's like, I'll sing it for you. He's like putting on his pants, and then he yeah. like grabs his shirt, and then he gets down and he pushes up, and then he like <laughs> ties his thing. Yeah. And then he does like a vampire. Oh, face, that's and then they spooky. CGI over his face. It, it wasn't spooky. It was funny. Oh, it was funny. It wasn't yeah. meant to be funny. I don't know. Probably. Who knows? No, that's okay. There's another really fun event that's happening this week that you are a part of. Am I? What's what's going on there? Are you are you are you in a little play? Are you in a play or something? Uh yes. I think I'm in almost main. I think in fact I know it opens tomorrow at eight o'clock at the Francis Fraser Comstock Theater. It will be playing at eight o'clock uh, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday night, and two o'clock for those early birds um, on Sunday. Okay, well thank you so much, Jackson. Yes. I hope to see everyone at Almost Maine. Almost Next Maine. up, we have news. The news. Welcome to news, everybody. My name is Glory. And I'm Paul. The Travis County Sheriff's Department is undergoing a death investigation after a man's body was found. Authorities say on Tuesday, April 5, 6.30 p.m., they were called to a home in Browns Valley for a family disturbance before a deputy's call arrives. Offic officials say a man under the influence of drugs and alcohol left home. A short time later, the man's body was found. The Ramsey County Medical Center is now performing an autopsy to confirm the cause of death. And in local news, a shooting in Roseville, Minnesota this Tuesday resulted in the death of the suspect and the wounding of an officer. The man had fired over 100 rounds at both officers and the houses of neighbors before his death. The officer who was wounded received a gunshot wound in the face, but is currently in stable condition at a nearby hospital. The house of the 54-year-old suspect had had 15 mental health calls made in connection with the suspect in the past. And now, an extension to student loan payment. President Joe Biden on Wednesday announced an extension of the payment pause on federal student loan through August 31st. The the, mor the moratorium of students' loan payment was previously set to expire on May 1st, 
I know folks who are hit hard by the pandemic and we've come a long way in the last year. We are still recovering from the economic crisis it caused, Biden said in the video statement. These continued polls will help Americans breathe a little easier as we recover and rebuild from the pandemic. And in Oklahoma, Senate Bill 612 was passed this Tuesday. The bill makes it illegal for a doctor to perform an abortion except in the case of a medical emergency to save the life of a pregnant woman. The bill makes performing an abortion outside of these parameters a, pen a fe felony punishable by up to 10 years in prison and a fine of $100,000. The mm -hmm. bill passed 70 to 14. And now to the land of a honest man. A Burkina Faso military tribunal has sentenced ex-president Blaise Compaore to life imprisonment of complicity in the murder of pre his predecessor Thomas Sankara in 1987 and for undermining state security. Compaore was tried in absentia as he has been in exile in Ivory Coast since he was toppled from power by the popular uprising in 2014. Compaore's right-hand man, Gilbert Diendere, and former spy chief, Tozma Yacinte Cafando, were also given life sentences. Diendere is already serving a prison sentence for an attempted coup in 2015, and Cafando is at large. The long-awaited trial, nearly 35 years after Sankara and 12 other people were killed, was hailed by many right activists as a major step for justice in Burkina Faso. Sankara, a charismatic Marxist leader with a reputation as Africa's Che Guevara, has had a lasting impact to the country, changing its name from the French colonial upper Volta to Burkina Faso, which means land of honest men. In the local Moor and Diola languages, seated near the front, Sankara's widow, Mariam Sankara, told the Associated Press that justice has been served. And now an update on Ukraine. New satellite imagery out of Kiev has proven that civilians have been murdered by soldiers in a tragedy with which President Biden has called massive war crimes. The images show bodies of civilians lying in the streets of Buka, a suburb of Kiev. Some of the bo bodies are bound at the hands and feet. Others have been shot in the back of the head. The images have come just as Russian forces have begun to pull out of Kiev, with Russian media making the claim that the killings happened after Russian troops had already left the town. And now we'll shift to a, an interview with Hannah and Tamea. Hello, everyone. I'm Parker, and here we have the future representatives of the Concordia student body, Hannah and Tamea. Okay, we have Hannah here and Tamea. Can you two just tell me where you're from, what your major is, and what year in school you are? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is Hannah, like Parker said. I'm from Brainerd, Minnesota. I'm currently a sophomore, and I'm double majoring in psychology and sociology and then minoring in neuroscience. Awesome. My name is Tamea. I am from Slovakia. I'm a freshman this year, and I'm majoring in neuroscience and minoring in T-cell, which is teaching English to speakers of other languages. Okay, thank you so much for that. You two are incredibly ambitious, and I, I, I know I know you a little bit better, Tamea, and I'm starting to get to know you a little mm -hmm. bit more. I admire your work and thank you for stepping up to really want to take on this huge role of, you know, comprising the leadership team of Student Government Association. That is a big role. So first first thing that I want to know, what's your mission? Like what what are your values? What are things that you want to accomplish during your term next year? Yeah, absolutely. So when we were deciding that we first wanted to run um, for these positions, we looked a lot into um, a survey that had actually been conducted by the Center for Student Success back in the fall. And during the survey, they had asked a lot about like basic material needs that people were lacking in, such as food or shelter or transportation, things like that. And then the second half of the survey actually looked into how people were feeling um, that they belonged on Concordia's campus, whether that was in relationship with their peers or relationships with um, mentors and faculty that they had come across. And there was a surprising amount of people that had said that they just didn't feel like they belonged on Concordia's campus which was hard for me to hear because I remember touring Concordia um, as a prospective student and everyone telling me how much of a community it is here and how close everyone feels. And unfortunately, that's just not the case right now. Um, so we're running a lot on the feeling of belonging and Tamea has a little bit more to talk about that yeah, too. Yeah, so 
pretty much talking about that. We well, we are hoping to rebuild the community, the student community on this campus, and create more of a collaboration with different organizations and clubs on campus so we can see more of that community over competition. Um, yeah, and we're hoping to be a strong team and good leaders that people can turn into and just share what they want to do on this campus. Okay, that is seriously absolutely fantastic. I think something that was actually also surprising to me, especially um, figuring that out later into the pandemic, that some that uh, plenty of students, a lot of students on campus, don't feel like they have a home here at Concordia and such a big part of like the mission of Concordia, not exactly the mission statement, but just like the general idea of coming to Concord mm -hmm. Concordia is that you're gonna experience a small community, a really tight knit community. You are gonna belong here. You are gonna be accepted in every facet of Concordia life but that's not true. It's Absolutely. unfortunately not true. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that through surveys that are being sent out from students. Mm -hmm. So thank you for taking on that big task because I mean, is there a like a book that just explains how do you like make people feel like they belong? <laughs> no, I'm sure that doesn't exist. So have you thought of some ways that you're gonna um, help, you know, create, um, rebuild the Concordia community for every single student on campus? Yeah, so we definitely have a couple of routes that we could go. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time mm -hmm. in just a year to do all of them, yes. but um, so one of the ways we looked at was just different interconnectedness between clubs that are locally here on campus. So getting different clubs involved with each other and realizing that they're able to help each other more than they may realize. Um, a second route that we looked into was a little bit bigger, so looking at the Tri-College University between MSUM and NDSU and seeing if there's room for collaboration and work there as well. Um, the third one is I would say probably a little bit more like tangible and actually um, changing not only the mindsets but also the way that Concordia is mm -hmm. almost constructed. So whether that looked like gender neutral bathrooms and Knutson or wheelchair and handicap accessible bathrooms in Olson Forum, that's also another route that we've looked into. I am so excited to hear this, seriously. That is huge, just to create more inclusion on campus. And it's it's almost so easy to do it in some ways, but so hard just to get by mm -hmm. some um, older people on this campus. So thank mm -hmm. you for taking on that task of wanting to do that. That's really important. Have you started constructing your leadership team yet? Where, where are you at in the process of that? I know you still have plenty of time here, but I just yeah. wanted to know, how's that um, going? We are getting really close to having all of our team finalized. Um, people are accepting their positions, mm -hmm. and hopefully by Friday we'll know our whole team. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting, and actually that's like, I think a lot quicker than some other SGA yeah. councils have been able yes. to elect a team, so it sounds like you already have a really good group going for, for you. Sure. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a freshman and a sophomore. It's a pretty big undertaking to want to be president and vice president of the yeah. college. Why did you decide to do this? I know you've talked a lot about inclusivity and how that's a driving passion of yours, mm -hmm. but really at the end of the day, what, what, what's going on? Like, why, why are you taking on this big role? Because that's, that's really exciting. For sure. I was lucky enough to have some um, upperclassmen um, role models that I was able to follow in the footsteps of a little bit. So I made some pretty close working relationships with a lot of faculty and administration this year. And I feel like I was ready to kind of step up there and actually make things happen and do things that I wanted to do. Yeah, for me, it's pretty much being part of different organizations and clubs and seeing um, people's wants and needs on this campus and trying to just make it happen next year or hoping to do some more. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay, and my final question for you all is how, how, can, how can anyone join SGA? Like, what's the process look like? Because I know SGA is one of the largest student organizations mm -hmm. on campus. Can they apply on Handshake? Should they be looking for specific positions? Can you explain that process? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a few more openings, actually, that we'll be sending out applications for, I think, next week. Awesome. And then if none of those are interesting to anyone who is looking, we also have um, positions that will open up in the fall. So those ones are a little bit more like introduction, kind of just very easy, step in, get your feet kind of wet thing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Concordia on Air. It's literally been a pleasure talking to you, and I'm so, so, so excited to hear about the work that you do next year because Concordia has a long way to go, people, but we got two awesome people right here that are going to get us there. Thank you so much thank for you your so time. Much. Thank you. And now we have sports. Thank you, Park, and welcome to news. The Concordia Director of Athletics, Rachel Bergeson, announced that Kirk Olin has been named the new head coach for the Concordia's men's hockey program. Olim has been head coach and general manager of the Wilmar, Wilmar, 
Warhawks in the North American Three Hockey League. Allen became the sixth head coach in the program since the 1967 to 1968 season. Kirk's success as a coach player and student athlete was a big part of the committee's decision. Ferguson said his familiarity with the MIAC and CAA Division III, and the commitment it takes to excel at high level made him a perfect fit for the position. Olim will begin his head coaching duties immediately. Concordia's, Concordia women's tennis team won two of the three double matches and all six single bouts as they cruised past Wisconsin Superior eight to one to gain a split in their two matches along the shores of Lake Superior. The Cobbers fell 8-1 to one to St. Scholastica in the lone conference match of the weekend on Saturday. CC then responded by claiming their third win in the last four matches with their commanding 8-1 to one victory over the Yellow Jackets. All three of Concordia College's wins during that stretch have been identical 8-1 to one margins. Concordia is now 7-10 to ten in dual matches this year. The seven wins are the most since the Cobbers won 13 during the 2012 season. Next on, Concordia will face nationally ranked Gustavus on Sunday, April 10th at 9 a.m. in St. Peter. Nine track. Concordia missed a step as they transitioned from the indoor to outdoor season. The Cobras kicked off the 2022 outdoors campaign at the Minnesota Morris Kruger invite as well as the USD early bird invite. Concordia sent their field athletes to Morris while the top track athletes headed south to Vermilion and CAA Indoor All-American Cooper Foxstead led the way for CC at Morris. He won the shot, put and was fifth in both the discus and hammer throw. Foxstead won the shot put with a distance of 51, 7.00 that marked its tops in the MIAC this year. And that's all for news today and now to our segment. Welcome to Arts and Entertainment, everyone. My name is Parker. My name is Elise. And I'm Jax. Are you? Yes. I don't I'm think sure so. I think you're a, you're a body double. <laughs> ah, it's it. been 20 minutes since you've seen him. You don't look like Jackson. You're right. I'm John Miller, his uh, stunt double. Really? Well, thank you for the work that you do. Are you ready for a fashion review today? Sure. Everyone, the Grammys were this weekend, which is one of my favorite favorite award shows throughout the entire year because of the fashion purely. We had the Oscars last week, but now this week we get Grammys. Yay. Yay. And I need the TV remote. So I'm going to usher one of my very favorite people to grab it, which is currently on the glass table. Are you guys ready for some TV magic? Everyone you're not. Oh no. Where's the remote? Oh, it, it, Oh, Hot it appeared. Remote. Hot remote. Thank you. Okay, everyone, we have eight people to look at today. We are going to speed run this fashion review. I also want to say this will probably be my last fashion review in my time here on Concordia on Air, and this has always been my favorite segment to do. So everyone, let's just really savor this one tonight, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's go. I might have to start. I might have to go back to start at the beginning here um, because, oh, Oh, we're just going to, everyone gets a little cycle through here of the people we're going to be talking sneak about peek. today, a little sneak peek, um, just easier to, oh, oh, it starts with Olivia. Okay. Everyone, we have Olivia Rodrigo here. She had a really great Grammy. Uh, she won three Grammys that night or maybe four Grammys. She's in vintage Chanel here. She's officially a Chanel girl, everyone. This is huge. She's officially announced her partnership with Chanel. She'll only be wearing Chanel on all red carpet events. What do we think of this dress? I, I, I think viewers at home, you can see it here up on the screen. I really, I think it's gorgeous. It's from 1989, so mm. it's an older dress for sure. Yeah, I think it's very sleek. Sleek? Mm -hmm. sleek. It's elegant. Mm -hmm. It definitely, you can tell that is vintage. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree, I agree. I really love the pink stripes that kind of just like, it creates kind of like a, like a, a, form for her her body you know what I mean because the dress mm -hmm. itself you know a black it doesn't can sometimes create like a really beautiful silhouette and sometimes not so much and this they have like these really cute like pink sparkles that just run down the sides of it so mm -hmm. I think it's lovely um what are our thoughts on Olivia Rodrigo pretty good pretty good we're talking about the outfit right no just just, just in general, general. 
pretty good. I'd want to make anyone angry, so she's she's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, listen, I live for the drama, so at least speak your mind. What do you dislike about Olivia Rodrigo? Oh, oh, we don't need to get into it. It's look, look, we can get look. Into there've it. been. It's it's mostly about the copyright kind of claims for mm -hmm. me, you know, mm -hmm. like you're gonna get canceled. Like, copyright is a lie. <laughs> It is a lie. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we have Lil Nas X. He is here wearing Balenciaga. This is, this is an artistic masterpiece. I'm sure you can see on the screen there's tons of embroidery, just really, really a complex design. I think it has pearls implemented in the outfit design or at least a pearlesque look to it with a butterfly. Butterflies are kind of like his huge symbol at the moment. It, you see it all over any artwork that he puts out for his albums or his music videos. Butterflies all over the place. This is definitely a little bit more of a, a audacious, outgoing look, very on brand for him. He's a fashion icon. What are our first impressions of this of this outfit today? It's definitely toned back from what I feel like we're used to mm -hmm. from Lil Nas X. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like this is very like, felt like he wanted to play it safe this year. Can I suggest something? Do you think he's doing what Gaga did? Really just like vibrant, intense outfits to begin with to shock people, and then further on in, in their career, tone it back a little bit because now now mm -hmm. that you've established a name for yourself now you can chill out does that sound right yeah that makes sense to me he, now he's got all the news attention mm -hmm. like on his own just because of him not because of his mm -hmm. outfits so although i do i do really think that this is just such an intricate piece yes. and especially you know like the pearls the embroidery i just it looks like very much like mm -hmm. a church in my brain, which is kind of a weird image, but like no, it's that makes sense. chapel ceiling sort of feel. It's very yeah. ornate, like mm -hmm. in the Catholic church, boy, do they love ornate <laughs> things. As a, as a former Catholic myself, I, I think I can say that. Um, Lil Nas X, yay or nay? I'm gonna say yay, I'm saying I don't yay. know. Honestly, you could probably put it on someone else and be like, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. But since it's Lil Nas X, I'm he like, pulls it yes. off. He does pull it <laughs> off. Next up we have, okay, just the biggest winner of the night. He won more Grammys than anyone else, John Baptiste. He, I, I hadn't known who this man was before um, the Grammys just last weekend. He is very handsome. I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> um, and he's wearing just such an interesting um, design. I really love that just diamond pattern. What is it? Argyle? Is it Argyle? Is that the word that I'm thinking of? Yes. Yes, it's yes. like kind of like an Argyle texture with with silver sequence it's, it's very interesting to look at i think it's cute what are your impressions it seems like something you gotta look up close like from mm -hmm. this picture it does look a little like cheap for yeah. it. Mm -hmm. i like the look but like the at least the way the picture makes it look it looks mm -hmm. kind of cheap like walmart mm -hmm. like fancy funny suit yeah. i will say yeah sequence can kind of cheapen up some outfits yeah. if it's not mm -hmm. done right i agree with that what are I'll your be thoughts? honest, I'm not a big fan of the pattern and also mm -hmm. just sequence. Like I have like a personal like vendetta against sequence. Oh, Having yeah. been in dance for like 12 years, it's I they're on everything, they're scratchy. I'm sure I, like it's it's nice that he's got like his arms covered so his mm -hmm. arms are going to get scratched by yes. it, but at the same time I'm sure that his arms are getting like caught on the rest of his suit. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. You know, yeah. I think he pulls it off, but I'm, just, pulls I'm not a off. big fan of it, but he's he also pulls it tall, off. and I see like I feel like a tall person could wear whatever they want. I'd be like, oh, it looks so good. Yeah. But it's, they're literally just tall. Okay, yay or nay? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna medium. say yay, but I love your opinions. Thank you. <laughs> this is what this show's about, people. We can have different opinions. Um, we're bringing America together. Anyways, um, we have Lady Gaga. Um, she <laughs> is in. Um, she's not even in any designer. She just I. She said, this is no designer. I don't know where she got the dress. She's not telling anyone where she got the dress. I kind of like that about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just simple black and white. I. It reminds me of the Flintstones. Like if the Flintstones <laughs> went to like a formal event, honestly, I don't like it. It's not my favorite. Okay, now that you say that, I see what you mean, especially like with the, the neck. necklace. It mm -hmm. looks like It looks like like shark teeth. You ruined it for me. I I'm was going to say I like it, but now I'm like, ooh, maybe not. Uh, I, was, I, really like, I really like her hair. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how much hair I like the cute. dress. It's... Hair is cute. I feel like the dress itself is kind of boring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it could like, be giving more. Yeah. Like, I get, like, as we just mentioned with Lil Nas X kind of toning mm -hmm. it back, but this is, like, completely, yeah. like, watering down your style for, this, for the purpose of, like, I, I don't stand out because mm -hmm. I'm Lady Gaga. I don't need to stand out. Based Lady off, Gaga. Lady Gaga. Uh, <laughs> based off of what I'm wearing. I don't need to stand out based off of what I'm mm -hmm. wearing. 
but I feel like this is just completely flat. Slay or nay? Mm, not nay. to slay. Sorry, Lady Gaga, you're rich. It's okay, you'll be fine. Oh, Doja Cat, I love Doja Cat. Doja Cat, she can do no wrong in my eyes. She mm -hmm. probably could, but like, <laughs> I, I really do enjoy her as a celebrity. I think she's fantastic. I think she's very, very funny. She's one of like the first like Generation Z. She might be more of a millennial. She's pretty young though. That like she's the first celebrity that really understands how to use um, social media and engagement for the younger generation, and it makes sense because she also grew up with social media. So of course she knows she's literally a pioneer of the platform as we all are in our own ways. Um, she is um, dressed in Louis Vuitton, um, very much a formal, beautiful, elegant look as well. Um, she's actually since announced that she's quitting music, which is kind of big. Have either of you read up on that story? I what do you know bit. about Elise? Well, well you know, I, I heard that she said it, but then I also heard that she took it back like a couple of days mm -hmm. later. Okay. I'm not sure how much of all of that is true. I try to stay out of that kind of drama. Yes, but. I don't, but I respect <laughs> you for that. I I don't know. I, I think it's a beautiful dress. Is it my favorite look of the night? No, but is it great? Yeah, absolutely. I can still say that it's great. What Jackson, what is it giving? Um, I like the dress. I think, uh, I think actually the hair might not be at least the, the hairstyle. Very Y2K. We're, yeah, we're really it, trying to bring that back. It, it is it, giving Snow Queen, personally. Uh, I looked at it and I said, mm -hmm. Elsa. Yeah. Especially with the, the blonde. I will also say, I don't like the hair that much. It kind of looks like I someone rubbed a balloon on her head before the it show. Could, yeah. It could work. <laughs> I think it, her look would definitely be elevated mm -hmm. if there was a different hairstyle. No, I agree. I agree. Do we, do we give a slay or nay? I give I'm it a gonna give it a slay. I'll anyways. give it a slay. It's, yeah, it's she can still do a slay. No she can do no wrong. Hair is in fashion. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just well, helps fashion. Sometimes. It does. It's it's a fashion. Um, I don't know what to say. Okay, so this is BTS. I don't listen to BTS, but our residential BTS member in the studio, the wonderful Elise here. <laughs> Elise, uh, this this is for you. What what are our thoughts on this? They're, they're dressed in Miu Miu, by the way. They're the only people at the Grammys that were dressed in a South Korean fashion designer. They're dressed in Miu Miu. I had to look up that pronunciation <laughs> 10 times. Miu Miu. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I love it. I like that they didn't go with like the basic like black Grammys mm -hmm. look. You know, um, I think that's what they did their first year at the Grammys. Very like casual, very like Sleek, formal, yep. you know, the bow ties and everything. But this year they really kind of blew it out the water, in my opinion. Um, especially with like the color pattern. Mm -hmm. I really like the different, um, all the different colors we got going on, but like they're still matchy. We got them in pairs. Um, I especially like V's uh, flower arrangement right here. I think that that was a nice touch. Um, yeah. Do you feel like their outfits is representative of their personalities? Because if there's one thing, I don't know a lot about <laughs> BTS, but I know, you know, the devil works hard. BTS's like PR team, just team in general, works way harder. And I know nothing is ever just done just to do it. Like it, it's always very well thought out and calculated. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like their their outfits are representative of their personalities? Or? I would say so, especially like we got a little bit uh, different styles and how everyone styled it. Mm -hmm. um, we got some people buttoned all the way up. Jungkook here isn't buttoned up at all. Um, yeah, I think that they all kind of style it their own ways and that it really is um, representative of their personality. That's awesome. I think I, I think it's great. Do you have Do you have thoughts, Jackson? I think it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's nothing like. It's not the greatest thing I've seen, but it's not the worst thing I've Dude, seen. Dude, you gotta watch it's out. Just, Those BTS fans, they'll murder you, honestly. I know, I, but I, I, I just, I just <laughs> think it's yeah. fine. Yeah, they'll cancel you, all right. Just fine. Just fine. Slay or nay or may? Slay. Slay, Slay. okay. Next up we have, oh, oh, boop, boop. Billie Eilish, Billie Eilish, Billie Eilish. Um, the first time I heard a Billie Eilish song, I was like, is this satanic? I don't know, but I kind of <laughs> like it. What are our thoughts, people? An all black look, very reminiscent of her very first era, which was kind of this, but but you know, it's representative of her, her first era, but much more formal. You know yeah, what I mean? I like, like it's still her, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, she's grown up a little bit. I think she's bringing it back. She wore, uh, a big baggy black, I think it was kind of a feathery dress at the Oscars. She's mm -hmm. kind of bringing back the the black and the, yes. uh, I like it. I like, it's very, yeah, Billie Eilish, very mm -hmm. 
significant. I was her. thinking the same thing, where it's kind of like she is going back a little bit towards mm -hmm. like where she came from with her outfits. Like I remember that always being such a thing that she always showed up to the red carpets with like super baggy clothes, and everyone was like, "Oh my gosh!" Mm -hmm. I know, it's scandalous. So crazy. Mm -hmm. But I really like how she kind of did a take on that that's a little bit different now like she's kind of going back to it but she's also staying with her more elegant sort of look mm -hmm. um also wednesday adams oh wednesday <laughs> adams for sure i was also thinking uh rich widow of, mm -hmm. of some sorts kind of maybe a little bit maybe um, beetlejuice with the hair oh definitely yeah. beetlejuice i that's a great musical by the way everyone stream <laughs> beetlejuice right now on spotify um or watch the movie that's also mm -hmm. great um do you do either of you have any last impressions of this look for the night no i think it's good slayer nay Slay. Yeah, it's pretty slay. slay. It's pretty slay. Also, who am I to say what's slay or not? You know what I mean? Like, sometimes it's like, we live in Moorhead, Minnesota. I, I love Moorhead, but it's not the fashion culture capital slay of the world. Slay is objective. You're right. Okay. This is the woman of the night. Everyone's talking about <laughs> Jojo. Everyone's talking about John, whatever. SZA? She, have you heard about this gag on Twitter, this run, this long running gag that SZA just like is a compulsive liar? She'll just like lie yeah. about random things. And she I confirmed it. It's hilarious. And this is like a bit that she does and has been doing since the beginning of her career. Um, to that, the, on the red carpet, she faked being in a wheelchair. She told everyone that she broke her ankle. So she had to like fake being in a wheelchair, but then she was still able to do the red carpet. And then when she went on stage to accept her Grammy, she, she, she was crutches. in crutches, <laughs> except she was just holding the crutches and she was just walking. It was the funniest thing. <laughs> she just lied about it all. And like, it's just like a part of this whole like, joke that says a lies all the time mm -hmm. of all that is things so to lie you know, about I... <laughs> I know being hurt and she'll lie about anything it's mm -hmm. not just about her her physical condition mm -hmm. either i think the dress is fine mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of 2017 you know what i mean like we already had that floral moment in fashion and i i'm kind of fine with it not being here again yeah, I have mixed feelings because from a distance, it looks really nice. Getting up closer than like, there's kind of a weird fishnet kind of thing mm -hmm. over the top part of the flowers and it makes them all look squished. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, it's in between looking like super expensive dress and super cheap, yeah. personally. Mm -hmm. Are we thinking Slayer Nay, everyone? Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Don't come for me, Sousa Stands. I still love her. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone, that was our final fashion review. Thank you for joining us today on Concordia on Air. Any final thoughts, crew? Have a great week, everyone. Have yeah. a great week, everyone. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.